going to see in this church is going to be uh, here. You guys can line up against the wall. But most of what you're going to see in this church is going to be Crusader because that's most of what's left today. Okay. This is from the Crusader period. So what I want to do is go around to the other side and we're going to come in from the direction of the original uh, entrance of the church. You'll get it if we go and do that. You won't get it if we don't. Okay, so we're going to do that. It's going to be a pain, but it's, it's important for the context. So follow me. I'll go slow. It'll be crowded. It'll be a pain, but we'll get her done. So now you're experiencing Jerusalem, but isn't this kind of what you would expect Jerusalem to be like? People from all over the world coming to this place. This shopping area that you're passing on your right, this is part, it's preserved. This was a shopping area in the time of Aelia Capitolina. This was the main shopping area in the Byzantine time. It's also the main forum of the town today. Everybody see that? Why did he lay this main road out, which you can still walk down today? We were just walking down it because it gave access to the main temple of Aelia Capitolina, uh, the temple of Jupiter and Venus. You see it? So what we're doing is we're coming off of that main street and we're entering the way that it was meant to be. Now, here's a reconstruction of what that temple looked like here. Okay, so facing this way. And so in the time of Aelia Capitolina, they would come up and then they would go upstairs. Do you see how it's, it's lower down there? In fact, there's a convent under here. If you go in that convent, you can see the stairs that are ascending to, in this period, the Temple of Jupiter. But in the period of the Byzantines, the church at that time called the Church of Anastasis, the Church of the Resurrection. Okay, so I should put it like this, with the stairs coming off, coming off of the Cardo Maximus. This is the church now, okay? They destroyed the church, they dug the hole, they found uh, the tomb, and, and they built the church. Remember an apse, remember we were at an apse yesterday, a half circle. There's two apses in the original church. It's been excavated several times, and so the excavations, we, we know the plan of the Constantinian church. Now, there's all kinds of, when there's a real true place, all kinds of crazy, superstitious things grow up around it that are not true. Like, for example, when you go in that entrance of the Crusaders, they stop and there's a crack in a pillar there where everybody puts their prayers because they believe that Jesus leaned up against that uh, pillar while he was weeping. Well, it's a crusader pillar, for goodness sakes. And, uh, and so there's all kinds of weird things. So what we're interested in is where they believed at this time in history the crucifixion happened. So you see the stairs right here, right? They're coming up the stairs. You're going to have to make space for let some people through. They come up the stairs. Then they entered into the church. Okay, do you see that? And then they come to an, uh, an apse. I don't know where it is exactly. There's the apse, you see it? This is the place of crucifixion. How do we know where the place of crucifixion is? Where they tell you today the place of crucifixion is, is not the place of crucifixion. It's where everybody's going upstairs. That's not the place of crucifixion. The place of crucifixion is here where the apse is. Today there's an apse there, but the apse is turned the opposite way. It's still the same place. It's the place of crucifixion, but today the, the um, apse faces east this way. Originally, the apse faced this way so that when you came off the Cardo Maximus, you went to the place of crucifixion first, and then you went to, under the big dome, uh, the place where uh, Jesus' tomb is. So is the first apse under the little dome? The first, yes, the cru place of crucifixion is under the first dome, okay. and the place and Jesus' tomb is under the second. So what we're going to do is you can't enter the church this way today, but we're going to walk through there. 
Then we're going to cut through the Ethiopian uh, portion of the church, a little tunnel there. We're going to pop out. We're going to go into the Crusader period entrance that we were just looking at before. It's going to, I don't even know how we're going to do it. It's, it's, you saw how many people are in there. Um, we'll just do the best we can. And uh, we're going to go into that chaotic church. I want you to keep in mind, though, when you're in there, this is it. This is the place. This is where world history climaxed, right here, in two events. Jesus' atoning sacrifice for us, and uh, his burial and his resurrection from the dead, proving that he is the Son of God, that he is the Messiah. Now, now I want you to take another look at the church. Again, let it sink in, really get the, this is the Crusader church that you're looking at here. Its entrance comes in from that other way, but it's built and repaired from the earlier churches where we would have gone right into the front of the church from this direction. Now, do you see this dome in front of us? Yeah. So we're going to go underneath this dome is where we're going. And when we're down underneath this dome and looking up at it, we're going to be on stairs. And these stairs are coming up. They're part of the original entrance to the church that is still preserved today, coming up from the Cardo Maximus. Okay. So here we go, let the chaos begin. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah, men, you want to take your hat off. Is also because of this reconstruction that's going on. So, you know, you have about uh, 80% less of room to maneuver as you used to. How old is this stone? Um, these ceilings are from the Crusader period. BC, and it lasted until the 70 AD destruction of Jerusalem. So that's the little window of period that they used ossuaries. So when you find a tomb, that is being used generation to generation uh, that are using ossuaries, you know you're in that window of time between 37 BC and 70 AD, time of Jesus. Why did they stop using them? 70 AD destruction. They might have, yeah. yeah. So it was destruction. They might have used them some to 135 too. Witness accounts like the ones that I read from to you, we don't know nothing. We know that this is the place. And you should be used to this by now, right? You're traveling around this country, seeing one stack of archaeology after another. When you're looking for an authentic place, that's what you're looking for. One thing built on top of another. If you don't have that, and the tradition only started in the 1800s, you're in the wrong place. You got to get to the place where the tradition and the archaeology and the historical text go all the way back to the time of the event. Exactly. The garden tomb is popular. If we were over there right now, it'd be nice if you'll see it's peaceful, the birds are singing, and you can <laughs> sing Kumbaya, and nobody will bother you, and so on and so forth. But if, if we want to understand the place that Jesus was crucified and the place that he was raised from the dead, we got to come to the place. Now, because it's a person who saves us, it's a person that we're in relationship with, then we can worship him wherever we are. And uh, it's not a requirement in Christianity that we make a pilgrimage here, right? It's a blessing, but it's not a requirement. It doesn't make us closer to God that we came here than if we didn't. But hopefully we understand a little better. Okay, now we're coming to, uh, sounds like a service going on. So I don't know how far we're going to make it. 
but now we're getting back to the side of the apps. So we're going to go walk around the outside of the apps. Okay. So the place of crucifixion to the right here. stones from uh, the church of Constantine, some of them. that we were standing on at outside at the front of the church right that's it right there you see it okay so the cardo maximus is out this way going like this you see that and then the original way that you came into the church or the temple before that the roman temple was up a set of stairs and those that's part of the the stairs that are preserved up to the place of crucifixion you remember, we were just right up there next to the outside of the apse. That original apse went like this, and you came up from the Cardo Maximus, up to the place of crucifixion, and then over to the tomb of Jesus. Does that make sense? Yes. This masonry, let me get try to get over here. Look at this masonry over here. This is part of the structure of Hadrian. You can see here is bedrock. This is part of the structure that Hadrian built, a giant temple mount over here, a big stone platform, so that he could put his temple up on top of the crucifixion place and the tomb of Jesus here. Now here's something very important, okay? Incredible, one of my favorite archeological discoveries of all time is through that door, which uh, I don't think the guy will let us go through. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just, uh, yeah. so anyways, through that door, we're getting kicked out, so we're, we'll start moving slowly. Uh, he's walking away. Uh, he's coming back. <laughs> through that door and down was discovered a boat inscription. I'm just telling him, boat inscription found down there with ancient Latin on it. It's pointed away from Golgotha. It's at least as old as Hadrian's time period. It's older than the church and it's the oldest pilgrim, Christian pilgrim inscription that we have. And it says in ancient Latin under the boat pointed away from Golgotha. Guess what it says? It says, yes Lord, we will Go. Wow. Uh, isn't that what Christianity is about? Yes. It's about the message of who Jesus is and what he did for us right up there. Going out to all the world. Uh, amazing, amazing discovery. Then when I'm uh, doing the rebuttal to the tomb of Jesus that's, that everybody has said that the bones of Jesus have been found, it's called the Talpiot tomb. It's in another neighborhood. So one thing I do is I come here at Easter, and also at Easter I go to this other tomb, and I film this other tomb where the bones of Jesus supposedly were found. And then I come here to the real tomb on Easter, both of them. And so then I cut from one to the other so you can imagine I cut here and that was calm as complete B in there for Easter. So it, you know, it's, it's a cut to this and everybody's going Whoa! big crowds you can't hardly see and then over to this other tomb where a bird is over there going 
tweet, 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 tweet,
go. His name, it's like Pinkleton or something like that. Don't quote me on that, but it's something like that. It, it's. No quote. But, uh, so do you see all the floors that he's digging down through? He's digging down through all these floors. And then he'll dig down another five, six inches, and then he hits another floor. So we'll see, it's a crusader floor, and then uh, uh, an Arab floor, crusader floor under that, a Byzantine floor under that, and a Roman period floor under that. Okay, at the very bottom is a structure that looks like this. This is the original structure that was there. And it's got a niche at the front. That's different than an apse. An apse goes like this all the way around. But this is a niche. And the moment he found it, he knew what he found. He found a synagogue. Now how does he know that it's a synagogue? Because uh, it doesn't have an apse in the front of the building. But it has a niche. And this niche is for the Torah. It's where the ark is for the Torah to be kept. Okay, and this is what you find from these Roman periods when you find synagogues. They have niches. And so he said, this is the niche facing the temple. And this is a uh, Jewish synagogue. However, at this lowest level, here he put on there Judeo-Christian Judeo-Christian graffiti. Yeah, I'll say Judeo-Christian graffiti. One of them says, Jesus is light. Uh, so we have a synagogue. We have a synagogue with the Torah niche with early Christian symbolism on the graffiti, including inscriptions that mention Jesus. So the idea, and we have early historical sources, early historical sources that at the time of Hadrian, when this was mostly rubble up here, uh, we have a historical source that says there was a church here, Eusebius. Eusebius says that the four Constantinian churches, two of them here in Jerusalem, one on the Mount of Olives and one we were just at, of those two, they were not the earliest church here that there was a church on the western hill built by the Jews. So why didn't Constantine build a church at the place that this is going to commemorate? Because there was already a church here. The Jews built their building of worship here. How far does it go back? It goes all the way back. Think, this building goes all the way back to the first century. AD. And we're going to do what we're going to do is we're going to walk in. Where is that other one? We're going to walk in. And the women, the men are going to be able to go. It's a synagogue today. The men are going to be able to walk into this and we're going to look at this niche. The women, you're going to have to go over on this side and you're going to have to, I don't know, I've, I'm, I've never been over on that side. So I don't know how hard it is to see, but you're going to want to look for the niche here. The men are going to see the big stones, the Herodian type stones that are built into the bottom structure of this synagogue. And you're going to see the niche up there. So what is this commemorating? This is... You're from different towns, right? When you drive into a town in America, uh, you drive in and you have the experience where you drive by the First Baptist Church, right? What does that mean? It means that the First Baptist Church in that town is that church, right? There's the First Presbyterian Church, the First Lutheran Church. This is the first church. This is the first church ever. Two events happened here. Now, uh, scripture doesn't exactly pin it down for us, but we have the upper room that's talked about in the Gospels. And what is one of the events that happens in the upper room? 
the Last Supper. So think about what they did in, in uh, the Last Supper. Today there's a Crusader church remains that is built above the synagogue remains that are underneath. What did they do in the Last Supper? The Last Supper, of course, is all about where we just were, right? It's all about the body of the Lord, the blood of the Lord, uh, that is, uh, is the new covenant today. Um, what's the other event? It talks about the upper room when Jesus ascended on the Mount of Olives. We were looking over there where Jesus ascended. Before he ascended, he didn't say go yet. He gave the command, go and make disciples of all nations. But before you do that, you're going to need some power. And so uh, don't leave Jerusalem, but, um, but wait for my promise. And so they, they come over here and they go to the upper room. And, uh, and so this upper room seems to be the same upper room. Definitely ancient tradition connects the two that the Last Supper and Pentecost then happens in the same place. And uh, this church from the earliest sources commemorates those two events. Don't get lost in all the stuff again, the Crusader stuff and the this and the and the Jewish synagogue. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see the the cenotaph of David in there, the empty coffin of David. That's not where the tomb of David is. Um, I can explain that later. But this is the place where the um, the Last Supper happened and where uh, where the Pente Pentecost happened, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. This is, you were at the Church of Nativity in Bethlehem. That's the birth of Jesus. This is the birth of the church. And, uh, and then we're going to go up on the roof and we're going uh, to see something else of how we know. But right now is going to be the chaotic part. We're going to walk in there. We're going to split up men and women once we get into the synagogue. You're in a synagogue. You don't have to take your hat off. And, uh, and then we're going to go over, we're going to see the earliest structures. We're going to see the earliest structures back in this niche where the Torah was. And, uh, and then we're going to go up on the roof and we're going to talk about something else amazing. Holes in here. You will see their Herodian stones. You'll see their early Roman, first century. And women, you're looking also for the niche at the front of the building. I'm not sure if you can see it or not. Big, that's the Ark of the Torah. So that's what that niche is for in the front of the synagogue building. Massive stones. And then if you look up, you can. Yep, they stop right there. So that's where the original building here is presented. Guys can go out. So again, look at these trees. Look at these cypress trees and where the niche is, where the niche is facing. You see the big Herodian stones that are in the niche itself? Okay. So, this was all part of the city of, at G the time of Jesus, up on the western hill. From the time of Hezekiah, as he put the, the wall around here. Time of Jesus, this is part of the city. Uh, then the 70 destruction, then the upper room, before the, uh, the destruction, the time of Jesus, there was the first place where Jesus was ministering to his disciples and that they were gathering together, where they had the Last Supper together. And then um, this is the, the upper room where then they gathered uh, after Jesus ascended. And, um, and so that house was basically it was a house church it was a home church right it was a house that they were meeting in that the believers in Jesus the Christians the early Christians who were Jewish were meeting in then in 70 AD that was destroyed how severely who knows and then in the first century still in the first century AD after 70 AD that's when 
This building was built that you were seeing the stones built over where that original house was that had been destroyed and now rebuilt into a worship place at that place because these are all Jewish believers it was built in the structure of a synagogue Eusebius says that the Jews built a church here a place of worship here um, we have early sources that say at the time of Hadrian when this was then there was a church up here and then archaeologically when this uh, mortar came in and blew the building up then they were able to do the archaeology excavations because of the damage to the to the um, so we have that early church from the uh, synagogue from the um, first century and then on top of that eventually a Byzantine church was built right here's the Byzantine layer here's the Roman period from with the Judeo-Christian graffiti Jesus is light then they built uh, over the top of that a Byzantine church and in fact this is the structure of the Byzantine church but they preserve the original synagogue within their church to show the original they they commemorated it do you see that this is the place of Pentecost um, then it was excavated by uh, a you know then of course you got the Crusader there's a Crusader church under us and but they built the Crusader church over the top of the original church to represent the space of the upper room that would have been the upper room of the of that original house okay do you understand so now we're standing on top of all that so all that archaeology is directly below us and you can see the niche here is facing you can see it right here right and you got these domes around to commemorate this place and uh, and so then somebody actually quite a few people about the same time caught on to something here is the niche but guess what they realized it's not pointing towards the temple temple you can see right where the Dome of the Rock is right on the left of the tree here you all see that that's where the Dome of the Rock do you see where the niche is is the niche pointing towards that it's pointing that way okay so you all just uh, gave a wonderful donation so appreciative of uh, a drone I'll show you the good that a drone does so we went up my son and I took our drone up in the air to take this picture you see that's that dome right there oh, wow. see that mm -hmm. so you see the new niche is right in front of us once you see where we are right here now I'm going to show you where that niche is pointing it's pointing to where my finger is right there do you see it that's where we were that's the church right what is that that's where we just were that's where this niche is facing. Was the Church of the Holy Sepulcher there in the first century AD when they built this niche facing that way? What was over there in the first century AD, right after the 70 AD destruction? Tomb of Jesus in the crucifixion place. This is before Hadrian. Once scholars realized, oh my goodness, the niche is not pointing to the temple. This explains the graffiti, Jesus' light found on the graffiti. It's not pointing towards the temple. It's pointing towards the place of crucifixion and the place of resurrection. Think about it. The place of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit of the Last Supper event what better place to build your commemorative building in the first century AD and have it point what better place for the body of Jesus the blood of Jesus the new covenant than to face the very place that Jesus brought us into the new covenant Amazing. Wow this is where the church was born through the body and the blood of Jesus, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the birth of the first church, 
that now has, uh, like fire, <laughs> spread all over the world to the most remote places of the world. But it all started right here. It started with the work, the salvation work of Jesus, His ascension, glorification to the right hand of God the Father, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to empower the witnesses, to be witnesses in this world of who He is and the message of good news uh, that is uh, the work that He's accomplished. Now you see why I had to bring you here. I just had to. Yeah. What church is that? This one called? This is, it's got different names in different periods, but um, a good one to call it is what it's called uh, here, which is the, the Church of the Apostles. The Church of the Apostles. Um, then it's called different things in different periods, but that's a good one to remember it by, the Church of the Apostles.